everyone, welcome back to another Ableton tutorial. Lovely to have you here on this Wednesday afternoon. It's bright, early spring and sunny where I am. I hope it's awesome wherever you are. Uh, big shout out YouTube crew, big shout out Patreon crew. All Patreon members, including the free Patreon members, will be able to download this entire session exactly as it is right now. Uh, link in the description below if you want to go and grab that. Uh, right, so what are we looking at today? Well. I got a question on a previous uh, video, a video about using audio to trigger MIDI. And in that video, I was using uh, audio input source to create a MIDI signal uh, that I was then making do some random blibbity blubbity things. Uh, if you've watched a few videos on this channel, you know that I often come back to this idea of patterns and sequences, that our brain looks for patterns in the music that we're making, and that's where we find the musical meaning. So the question was about how can I use that MIDI to, instead of trigger random blibbity blubbity stuff to instead trigger notes in a melody uh, so that the order of the notes would always be the same but the input and when those notes happen uh, is dictated by a external sound source so that's exactly what you can hear going on in the background it's a midi sequence a sequence of notes i think it's seven notes or eight notes i can't remember exactly right now uh, so they always play in the same order but exactly when they play is slightly different and i've used a, a rack that i made in a previous video about hocketing uh, to generate the sound. So each time the sound is different as well, but the notes, the order of the notes stays the same. And that's what we're gonna look at today. It is a technique called hocketing uh, and the previous hocket video, link in the description below, um, looks at how to change uh, the sound with each new note that's generated. So it's this idea of uh, using one particular event to trigger another particular event. So let's have a listen to what I've got going on in this project. Uh, first of all, I've got a just a drone happening in the background. Uh, this drone is from a pack of drones that I made. Again, link in the... This is sounding a bit like an advertisement, isn't it? Link in the description below if you want to download a pack of drones. Uh, I also have this drum loop going and... Wow! <laughs> more advertisements. This is from a sample pack that I made that comes along with the drum rack. All these sounds are made from my lamp in my studio. Uh, again, this is part of this, this whole project that you can download if you are a free Patreon member. So you can grab that rack. And then I have this, this going on. So this is where this idea of the rotating notes being triggered by external sounds is happening. And in this case, it's being, we're getting a new note is being made each time there's a kick drum and a snare drum happening. What do I mean by that? What does all that mean? Let's stop this uh, and let's start from the start. Oh, that's nice. I've got a little freeze happening on this drum loop. Uh, let's just let's just turn that off. Let's just turn that off. Right. Okay. So I'm going to delete this this track and let's start from scratch. Uh, so the main thing that we're going to use here is Ableton's MIDI effect uh, melodic steps because uh, we're wanting to effectively step through a melodic sequence. So I'm going to bring that over here. Uh, I'm going to need the drums for this. Uh, so I'm going to have to turn off whatever that freeze effect was. Uh, that's probably it there. So now, yeah, there we go. That's gone. Right. So I'm going to start. So we have this melodic steps thing happening here. Uh, I'm going to bring in just one instance of operator, put it afterwards. And you can see that because the transport's running, it's generating a bunch of stuff. It's not happening all the time because this chance is all the way down. So I'm going to turn that chance all the way up. Uh, let's let's get it to make a little sequence. I'm going to put this in, uh, in in mono mode. Don't need multiple voices. It's just going to confuse us right now. Okay, so, so that is rocketing through that sequence. Uh, and that will always happen whenever the transport is running. But if we hit this MIDI button here, Ah, yes, thank you. Now, it's only going to be running the sequence whilst MIDI input is happening. I think you can see where we're heading here, but let's test that out. So I'm going to put in a MIDI clip here that has uh, two, two quarter notes on and two quarter notes off, and we go... So you can see it's running for two quarter notes, and then it's, and then it's stopping. So whenever, whenever there is MIDI input into this now, now that I have this triggered, uh, we can tell it to start and stop. So that's going to be the essence of what we're doing. But now I want to use not, not, not a MIDI clip inside of this, this track, but instead I want to use MIDI coming from somewhere else. In this case, I'm going to use MIDI coming from the drums. The, the question was about 
uh, using audio input, but we've generated the MIDI from that previous video, so now I'm going to use MIDI that's already existing. Uh, right, so I'm going to program in a very, very simple drum loop here. We're going to have a kick. Ooh, that's nice. And then a, and then, and then a little snare. So that sounds like this. Lovely. Uh, now I come back to our, to our melodic steps situation, and of course it's not running because there's nobody input. Press this. Uh, or, of course, I can turn this off, and now it's just going to run all the time. Now, you might have also noticed that that was changing the actual pitches. So this runs using pitch input. In this case, uh, the input, the, the source key is C, and it's actually already C1, sorry, and it's actually already put it all into C major. This is the, the scaling effect that uh, this melodic steps device can do. Also, uh, when I was inputting this note here, which in the MIDI clip is a C3, uh, it's then using that as the bottom note and uh, doing all this transpose from C3. So uh, let's just take a quick look at what that might mean. So if I'm changing the two notes here, you can hear how it's shifting the step up. So, so it's using the input MIDI note as the bottom note here. Right, so I want to be taking MIDI from these drums this, uh, this kick and the snare that I've made over here, and I want to use that to trigger or turn on and off this melodic steps. So what I'm going to do is on this this channel that has the melodic has the melodic steps on, I'm going to select MIDI from Lamp Drum Rack, and I'm going to turn the MIDI in on here. So now you can hear it's cycling through these notes as it begins to play. Now, I want this input note to actually be a C3. Uh, so I'm gonna constrain the range of all of these, these notes coming in because I don't want it to be changing pitch depending on kick and the snare here. So ooh, come back here, please. So I'm gonna use a MIDI pitch device here. I'm gonna put the lowest note to be C3. Where have you gone? C3, please. C3, and I'm going to set the range to be uh, zero, and I'm going to set the mode to be fold. So now the input note is always C3. If I make these all the... So now you can hear that no matter what note is being triggered in the drums MIDI, in this output MIDI here, it's always using C3 as its input uh, note. So I'm going to I'm going to make that a longer sequence. And I'm just going to hit this chance button here. So let's make this drum thing a bit more complicated. Uh, let's make this a two bar loop. Uh, and let's make it do kind of one of these things. So you can really hear now that each time that note is being triggered, we're stepping through, we're stepping through this sequence. Uh, what would happen if all of these notes were super long? And now you hear, see, you, you hear we're stepping through more than we want to be. So we can, we can solve that problem here with a note length. So we're going to bring this in after the pitch. I'm going to set this to be uh, quantized to the grid, and I'm just going to make each note length one sixteenth note, which is the uh, quantization that these grids are set to. We can slow down and speed up the speed of this melodic steps here, uh, in which case we would have to change the length of this note. But now I'm only getting one, one trigger per note, so now it doesn't matter how long or how short those MIDI notes coming from the drums are. I can make them like really, really short. And we're still only getting the, that one note being uh, triggered here because this, this note length is doing some hard work. Now let's say I come over here and I wanted to do something like... something like a bit like a shaker. Now you can hear we're getting a lot of triggers of this note, and that's kind of annoying. Like I kind of only wanted it to be doing the kick and the snare, and not all of these these other sounds that are now in there as well. So we can solve that problem. If I group all of this together, I'll select Command G, uh, and now I open up uh, the, the chain selector chain situation here, 
I'm going to, in this case, use key selection. So I'm going to say, I don't want these notes here that are happening, whatever that is, G sharp one. So I'm just going to... Now that, that sound is actually really loud, so we're kind of getting a little bit confused. Let's turn that sound down. Where have you gone? Random chain. So now you can hear, because I've constrained the range of notes that I want to take going into this whole situation, we're not getting that, well, that is kind of functioning a bit like a shaker. Of course, it's not a shaker. Uh, so we can also be very precise about which notes we're taking. Um, if, for instance, I wanted to take only the kick and only the snare and not even the note in between that, which in this case is, I think, a nice deep sub. Yeah, okay, so let's put a deep sub in there. So I could imagine we've got a deep sub happening in here somewhere. So now that's going to... So that's now triggering a new note. If I want that to not trigger a new note, um, I can simply come back here into operator. And in this case, I'm going to have to say, be really precise. C1 is the kick. So I'm going to call that kick. And I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm just going to move that to D1, which is the snare. So I can be really precise about which drums in this drum rack I'm wanting to tri uh, trigger with a new uh, trigger a new note in this in this sequence. Now that's essentially what I did. I then did some processing on this sound because I thought that, that sounded a bit more interesting. I'm going to change this. Okay, let's make it a uh, minor scale. I don't know. Kind of feels like maybe I'm going to turn that sub off. Don't want it. Uh, what else have we got here? Scraper sound. Yeah, that's nice. Let's make this four bars long. Let's duplicate all of this. Uh, let's add something like this in here. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, now, in here maybe. Oh, there. That'll do. Okay, this is sounding quite nice. Weird, a little bit weird, but kind of nice. Uh, now, I'm just going to use uh, my pre-made Hocket rack in here, which again, if you sign up to be free, uh, free Patreon member, you can download this set, which will include this Hocket rack. Uh, so that's over here in my instruments. Uh, Thea Hocket, I'm going to drag that in here. So now you can hear we're getting a new, a new, a new synth is being triggered every time there's a new note. Actually, this is sounding a bit weird. What happens if we go back? That's sounding a bit nicer. I, th I think that's sounding a bit nicer. Oh, maybe I'm going to shift the pitch of this stuff happening in here. That bell thing's okay. That one, that resonant hit, you can go up. Maybe one more. Yeah, that's nicer. Maybe let's do a little bit more processing on this. I'm gonna add a nice little rack afterwards. I'm gonna bring up, uh, yeah, a nice little rack after here. What are we gonna do? We're gonna add, uh, we're gonna add, yeah, we're gonna add a spectral time. Let's make this 100% wet. We're gonna make it turn off the delay, make it freeze and re trigger. Nice. Yeah, I wanna just fade out. Yeah, now let's put a, uh, a reverb after that. Uh, hybrid reverb. Let's make that 100% wet. Let's group both of those. Uh, add a dry chain, create chain, right click. Now we have the dry signal and we have this nice little effect. I'm really liking these effects actually, that's kind of cool. Let's put a macro so that I can fade between those two effects. So I'm going to use chain selector here. I'm going to make them both go all the way. 
Then if I hover over this little white bit at the top, you'll see it sort of highlights a tiny bit. I can create a fade. I'm gonna do the same up here, so fade out. Uh, let's attach that to macro one. So now we can, we can fade where those sounds are being sent to. That's quite nice, that's really nice actually. We could of course attach uh, a random to that, sort of a yeah, expression control. Let's use an expression control in here. Oh yeah, that has to go there. Uh, and I'm just gonna, yeah, random map that to here. Ah, this is fun. Let's make it go bipolar and 50%, uh, uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so that's the rack. That's how it works. This is how we use uh, MIDI from one track to trigger a MIDI sequence on another track, trigger a note sequence on another track. Uh, of course, you don't have to use drums. You can use whatever you like. You're adults. You can make your own decisions. We could use notes from a uh, notes from a synth to trigger the the drum loop to trigger the order in which a drum pattern is being played. You know, all of these things. Uh, Tag me if you're doing stuff. I would love to hear what you're up to. I'd love to hear how you're using these ideas in your own making and exploring. Big shout out for being here. Once again, this whole set available on Patreon. I'll stop the advertisement now and I'll probably stop the video about now. Blatt.